Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Yoda Programming using Scala. In this video we're going to uh, work on implementing our last method for our BST and then testing it. Uh, we'll see if we manage to finish that all in one video. Uh, because <clears throat> the last video is the most significant of them, at least when we actually write the code, and it is the remove um, operation. So how do we remove things from a BST? So let's come look at our BST here. Now some of these nodes would be very easy to remove. The 2, the 4, the 6, the 8, you just simply get rid of them uh, by uh, cutting off the pointer to them from their parent. Those would be easy. The 3 and the 7 wouldn't be that bad uh, in the sense that if I remove the 3, it can either be replaced by the 2 or the 4. One of these moves up and the other one just replaces it. Okay, simple enough. Uh, the challenge here, the, the case that we really worry about is the five. Okay, it's the situation where both of our, uh, where the node has two children, because if the node has only one child or zero children, it's, it's actually an easy case. If it has two children though, um, things are a little bit more interesting. And so, what uh, we need to do is, this is actually going to be a two-step process. The first thing is, if I want to remove a node, the first thing I have to do is find the node. Okay? And then after I've found the node, then I can go about the process of removing it. Now, let's consider the case of the five. How do we remove the five? Well, a lot of times students will suggest to me, so the problem is I can't simply remove the five because then I have two trees. Okay, so I somehow need to make this into one tree that includes both of these subtrees. And I need to make sure that whatever results from this has the, uh, the property that it satisfies uh, the ordering of a BST. Okay, so that things to the left are less and things to the right are greater. For example, I can't, take, I can't pull the three up and push the four under the two because then the four would be on the wrong side of, of the three. Sometimes students will give me the suggestion, well, you could take this whole subtree and stick it down over here, or you could take this whole subtree and stick it down over here. The problem is doing either one of those causes the tree to become unbalanced. And a balanced BST has operations that take, that, uh, take order log in time. An unbalanced BST can degrade all the way to, to order in. And basically, your BST can become a linked list. If we were to add the values two through eight in order, we get a linked list starting with two and going down. But there are lots of other ways that you can basically make a tree that has no branching so that every node has exactly one child and then it's effectively a slow linked list. Um, we want to prevent that if at all possible. And so the way to remove without distinctly skewing the tree is to replace the node here, and, or actually I'm not going to replace the node, I'm going to replace the values in the node with either the largest value on the left subtree or the smallest value on the right subtree. You can pick whichever one you want. I'm going to go with the largest value on, on the left subtree. So in other words, when I take out this 5, I'm going to replace it with the 4. So the 4 will be removed from beneath the 3 and it will move up here uh, to where the 5 is. So how are we going to write code that does this? Um, I'm going to write it using two recursive methods. So we wrote our plus equals using a recursive method here. We had this recur and it turns out that the version that I want, and I'm also going to copy this root equals recurve root. What I want is going to look so similar to the add that I'm just going to copy over the add to start with. So I have my recur, it returns a node, that way the handling the root isn't really a special case. If, if the thing you're removing is the root, it's still going to return the node that the root should be linked to, and if it's something else, you'll just return the root node. Uh, it tends to make the code simpler. So, well, it turns out that this case here, if n equals null, that means you got all the way down beyond a leaf and you never found the thing you were looking for. So in the case of this tree, that would be like I said, remove one. Well, it says, well, one is less than five, one is less than three, one is less than two, null. There was no one, okay? So we have no work to do. 
And in the case of remove, it literally is supposed to do nothing. So instead of having that case there with an else, I'm simply going to do that. I'm going to say if, uh, if n is not equal to null, then we're going to, to work on this. We'll have to, because this doesn't yet have, have an else, um, I guess, oh, okay, we could leave the code as it was here. Whoa. Okay. And simply return null. Because I do need to return something. Okay. Um, now, what about my other cases? So I do my comparison and I check if it's equal. Well, that means that I found the thing that I want to delete. Node in is, I often use the variable name, victim, the, the thing that we're taking out. Uh, what about our other two cases? Well, it turns out if it's to the left, we do the exact same thing. And if it's to the right, we do the same thing there. Uh, because that we would have done an add. We're just going down and we're gonna return whatever node is, is appropriate. So all of the work that we need to do is inside of this case here, which is the, we found the thing that we want to delete. In this situation, we have several special cases that, that we should handle. They are the easy cases. So if n.left is null, then I simply want to return n.right. Else, if n.right is null, return n dot left. Else, mm, you have two children. Okay, so let's, let's run through these situations here on our tree. It turns out that two, four, six, and eight are going to trigger this. If we remove the two, what happens is it is supposed to, it, it checks and it says, well, hey, the left side is null, so it returns the right side, which is also null, and sets, that will wind up setting the left of three to be null. And to understand that, remember that whatever this recursive call returns when we went down to the two, that is going to be the new value of the left of the three. So we build back up the links as we pop back up the, the call stack. And that's how recursion makes this simpler. So when I get to the three, I don't have to remember, oh wait, this, this assignment should happen on the left child, not the right child, etc. The call stack was remembering that for us. So I, uh, in one simple case, so if the two had one of its children, it would turn, return a pointer to that one. Uh, in the case where it has none, it winds up returning you know, one of them, which happens to be null, uh, and that's fine. So those are our easy cases. What about the case that's not easy? What about when you have two children in there? So this would be it return, uh, removing any of these from here. Well, we said that the rule that we're going to do is we are going to return the uh, um, the maximum value from the left child. So, if we were returning, if we were deleting the five, we would wind up moving the four up, and if we are uh, if we were deleting the three, we would move the two up because the two is actually the maximum child, similar to if we were doing the seven we would do the six. So what I want to do is I want to write another recursive function that what, it, what its job is, is it's supposed to uh, run down the, so we, we're gonna pass it the left child of our victim, the thing we're moving, where we're moving, and it is supposed to run down and find the largest thing. So it's supposed to go right, 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 however far this subtree goes. When it finds the thing there, it needs to get the two values from it so that it can return them back so that we can come into here and, and reset the key and the value. And then it also needs to relink the tree. So it's possible, for example, this four, if this tree had a 3.5, it would be under the four here. Well, the three's right pointer needs to point to that 3.5. And we also need to relink other things up. Uh, for example, it's possible in the case where we're deleting the three, it's going to replace, be replaced by the two. And so the left child here should be set to null, 
which happens to be the uh, left child of, of the um, of the two. And, okay, so let's start writing some of that code. So in this case, I am going to set in dot left equal to remove max of in dot left. Okay, so in is our victim, um, which I haven't written this yet, and actually this is not, can't be written quite this simply. Val k v uh, node n dot left equals node n dot key equals k n dot value equals v. This recursive function is going to return three things to us. The key and the value of that maximum thing on the left child because we are calling it on the left and so it's going to run all the way down. It's going to give us back the key and the value and it's also going to give us back the node that we are supposed to be linking into. So let's go ahead and let's def remove max. It takes a node and it is supposed to return to us one key, one value, and one node. And so when we save that, the code up here is happy and this code doesn't work. We'll come back in the next video and we will complete the remove max and then hopefully get around to testing.